I can't tell. All I know is that my sensor light came on, and I just happened to glimpse and see this thing running across the yard. Uh, a good-sized man, or something looks like a man. I don't know what it was, just that it ran across the yard. Okay. You've had problems in the neighborhood before? Yeah, my dog was killed here just recently. I don't know what it was, whatever it is. It's running. I couldn't catch it if I was going to chase it. So whatever it was, it was standing up. I'm out here looking through the window now, and I don't see anything. I don't want to go outside. You're listening to Paranormal 411, coming to you live from an undisclosed location deep within the Appalachian Mountains, bringing you the unknown with your hosts David Reagan and Jason Scott, Paranormal 411. All right, welcome. Welcome, everybody. We got a great show tonight. We do. We had a... A really good time last time Wajid Hassan was on, and uh, definitely look forward to this talk tonight. Yes. And uh, if anybody uh, wants to know more about him, uh, you could come onto our website, and it's got a link to his website on there. And uh, you could also um, go and look up his book, The Struggle for World Sanity. It's very good. It's also also on audiobook. So that's how I read it, yeah. listened to it. Um, it's really good. So how you doing, Jason? Doing pretty good. Had a good day? Oh, uh, yeah. Been working your Been tail busy off, haven't you? All day. <laughs> Be busy tomorrow. I'm busy, busy, busy. Busy bee. Yeah. Tomorrow, I'm going to actually take a minute for myself. That's good. And go to the uh, Scotch Irish Festival. Get to wear my kilt. Oh, yeah. Go eat some good food. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to it. Maybe we could get to the uh, Scotch eggs before they are all out. Every year we get there and they're sold out. Every year. Yeah. So um, before we uh, get to Wajid, uh, you know what we got to do. It's uh, This Day in History with David Reagan. Oh, thank you, Jason. You're welcome. So today is May 20th. 2022. So on this day in 1862, U.S. President Abraham Lincoln signed the Homestead Act, which provided 160 acres of public land virtually free of charge to those who had lived on and cultivated the land for at least five years. Also on this day in 1873, Levi Strauss and Jacob Davis were granted a patent for using copper rivets to strengthen certain areas of trousers, notably pocket corners. The patent was uh, create, uh, credited with giving rise to the blue jeans. What do you think about that? Oh, the <clears throat> blue jeans. The blue jeans. And the, those are just a few things that happened on this day in history. Wow. Oh, kind of cool, huh? Learn something every week. I'm telling you. It's kind of neat, huh? I like this day in history. <laughs> um, so, as you all know, we got to take a quick little break to uh, get our advertisers in here. Cha-ching. And when we come back, we're going to be talking with Wajid Hassan. Uh, we, we'll probably be talking a little bit of everything. He's he's pretty versed in all things. Yes. He's a great guy, too. Great guy. This is going to be a great conversation, and... Um, Definitely, you know, if you're in the chat rooms and you have a question, he loves answering questions. Oh, yeah. We'll be back. All right. We'll be back right after this. In a world on the edge of oblivion, go to paranormal411.org for all of your paranormal, extraterrestrial, Encrypted Needs. Thanks for listening to the show. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter at Paranormal411. Join us on the website at Paranormal411.org. It's free to sign up and become a member. All of our upcoming shows are on the guest and events page. 
You can also listen to past shows on the website as well. And if you like the show and want to support us, you can do that by becoming a premium member for only $2 a month. Thanks for listening to Paranormal 411. Join us. This is Jeff Reagan of the Band Catalyst. Visit Paranormal 411. Click on our link on the right-hand side to listen to or purchase any of our albums on BandLab. All right, we're back. Oh, yeah. I want to thank the band Catalyst, Jeff Reagan and them, for uh, allowing us to play their music. It's always excellent, and um, just want to thank you. And also, we want to thank uh, Eddie from Legend and Lord's Pizza. Best pizza on earth, I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. Wings are as big as my head. Legends and Lord Pizza. Check them out. They're on Facebook. Yeah. If you're around this area, and and um, you definitely need to go and, and get you a slice. Actually, get you a whole pizza. Yeah. And they're famous for a specialty pizza. The oh, pickle pizza. The pickle pizza. Yeah. That's put them on the map. The pickle pizza. <laughs> and it's actually good. <laughs> so. <clears throat> so like I uh, said before the break, we have Wajid Hassan with us tonight. Uh he is from Pakistan. He moved to England and then settling in America. Wajid has lived an interesting and varied life in many fields of endeavor. From a technical background as a field service engineer to a stand up comedian with over 20 years as a union actor, voiceover, narration, and commercials, as well as TV and movie roles. That's awesome. You know, I've watched his YouTube. <clears throat> videos yeah and he's pretty good i I like watching them yeah he needs to need more we need more i'll tell you i i went to california you know and (laughs) and tried my hand but it didn't i didn't go too far so well he also uh has over 40 years experience in the field of metaphysics which that's Uh, our first our first show was a lot on the metaphysical side i think Healing, spirituality, and new age concepts. Uh, and guess what? He likes to hike, and he has climbed to the top of Mount Kiliman- Kilimanjaro. Yes, Kilimanjaro. And that's Africa's highest mountain. That's awesome. So he is a humanitarian and environmentalist, always looking for ways to improve life for people, along with a deep love for the planet and all the plants and animals who reside. Uh, let's just go ahead and bring him on. All right. All right. Well, how you, you doing? How you, you doing? Hey, guys. Uh, hey, David. Jason. I hope I didn't mess it up too bad. <laughs> no, you did a great job. I'll I'll, I'll send you the $20 later. <laughs> for the, for the, uh, Dang, for the you're accolade. getting 20 He only told me I was getting five. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, really, uh, your YouTube, uh, I love watching the videos of you. 
and yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's uh, good to have a little fun, uh, make believe, and make people laugh. You know, and uh, I think entertainment, in a way, is a form of service. You know, decent entertainment, and uh, you know, it's good to uplift people and make them. And, uh, nothing wrong with in- people enjoying life. You know, there's enough yes. misery around, right, guys? That's right. right. Absolutely. <laughs> That's um that's something that <clears throat> like we was talking off air earlier, you know, this last week has just been whew. So I'm trying to woo saw this week away and get to the next one, you know. <laughs> you know, I think it, to me personally, I think it's like everybody on the planet is being tested right now. It's like everybody's got some kind of challenge going on. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I friends and family and people I know there's, there's everybody I meet is going through some kind of challenge. So it's like, it's, it's kind of like we're being tested. That's what I feel. Yeah. That, you know, when you say it like that, I, I, that's, that's actually kind of probably the way I feel, you know, I feel yeah. like something's just testing me. Like how far, how far will you take it? You know, how far, right. When will you just say I give up? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, and uh, these these are definitely not the days to give up. These are the days to stay strong. Yes, because uh, these are these are very testing times, but they're also times to you know when your metal is tested. That's where you know got the women from the girls and the men from the boys, and right. uh, kind of got to stand strong no matter what you know. And yes, if you look through history, you look at any great person. Uh, every every great person that I know of, that I've researched, they've gone through their fires of adversity, they've gone through their failures, gone through their trials. And, you know, in the end, it's not how good you are or how talented you are. It's, in the end, is can you finish the race? Yes. And, uh, you know, <laughs> sometimes I don't want to finish the race. I feel overwhelmed. <laughs> but uh, but that's, uh, that's where my... Uh, my faith and my belief comes in and uh you know i think that's that's where that's where i look upon is is is, is, is to look on to a power you know that's greater than myself that's greater than anything terrestrial or physical or political or even religious right. so i rely on that uh, to keep me going in these uh, these troubled times yeah i think those are very good words that anybody hearing those should actually <clears throat> take and meditate on that. Cause you know, when you um, think about the fact that everybody does go through t- trials and, and uh, their own in their own ways. And uh, when everybody has a point to where they feel like giving up, it's just what separates the, the great people from the others is the ones that just they pursue and, and, and they pass through it and, and come out the other side better for it. Well, the way I look at it, based based on my research and based on philosophies that I've read, uh, I don't think we're here to be punished. I don't think life is a punishment. Um, I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a lesson. It's a teaching sometimes. Yeah. yeah, teachings are not easy. They're very, very, but they, 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 you know, it's, it's like gold going through, going through the fires, through the crucible. You know, it has to melt and, and all the slag taken off and all the impurities. And sometimes, you know, it is a test of fire. Not all the time. You know what I mean, but, but uh, you know, uh, along with my yogi master and other great masters, they've they've, they've said over and over again. That we, we didn't come to earth to suffer. We came to, this is a great classroom for us. And, uh, you know, but, um, but in the end, you know, you know, pain is inevitable to say, but suffering is an option. And it, it, it all depends on the mindset, uh, of, of, of where you're at. Um, I have a friend of mine, she has terminal cancer right now, but she, she's kind of laughing it off. She's got about three months left. And then, uh, you know, and I got other people who have minor things in their life and it's all dramatic. So, right. but, you know, each to their own, I, you know, who am I to judge another person unless I, I'm in their shoes and know what they're going through. But, 
But I can say that despite the darkness, there is a wedge of light. There is inspiration coming from the higher beings, from the higher sources. And uh, we just have to reach up to it. You know, instead of looking and getting miserable on our, on our iPhones and all the chaos, uh, there is, I still believe, uh, and again, you know, based on uh, things that I've learned, uh, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And, uh, you know, the conditions that we're in right now are just our own making. We can't really blame a, a higher source for it. You know, we can only blame we can only blame ourselves because we're all part of this one unit, which is called the human race. You know, we've been divided, different races, different religions, um, different sexes and different ideologies. But these are all designed to learn different things. And as somebody who's a firm believer in reincarnation, it, it, it points out to the fact that we, we eventually you know, we experience becoming all races and all religions and all sexes, and, we, and that's what we have to keep continually learning life after life till we, re, till we learn all the lessons that we're supposed to learn on this beautiful planet. Mm -hmm. And then we, we move on to other higher realms, other dimensions, other, other planes of existence. And so, you know, it is, it is a, it, it's a beautiful classroom, this, you know, talk about UFOs, we, we were on the one of the most amazing spacecraft ever devised, this planet herself going through space, you know, we're living on a beautiful spacecraft, yeah. going around the sun with other spacecraft, other planets that's moving around the galaxy. I mean, this is, and I mean, to me, this is beyond science fiction that we're, we're actually encased with, with an atmosphere. I mean, where did this atmosphere come from? You know, yeah. Yeah. and you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, you know, how can a planet create an atmosphere uh, of uh, plants and trees and animals? If all these resources, it's not by chance, you know, that the sun rises in the east, you know, and uh, it's not by chance that we have an atmosphere. I mean, the scientists, they, 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 they've been through history and, and they, they, they can't figure out why the, the, you know, the, the temperature of this earth has stayed ambient over the centuries. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, it points to this earth not just being a piece of rock, but a, a living, breathing goddess, which I believe she is. Most indigenous tribes around the planet believe know yes. that and they worship her yeah. for that. They worship the sun. Because without the plant, without the earth and the sun, where would, where would we be? So we have this refuge in space with a created atmosphere. I mean, that's phenomenal. And, uh, and ambient temperatures, of course, they're changing right now because the earth herself is changing. Yes. But, uh, so for me, you know, I guess no matter what I'm going through, I, I guess I probably, you know, just I'm grateful for the food I eat, the food I get, the water I drink, you know, listen to the birds and, you know, base, going back to the basics, going back to the roots and, you know, we're all part of, part of nature. We're all part of the cosmos. We're, 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 there's no separation between us and the cosmos. You know, um, you know, people have looked at, you know, the, the eyelid and, and examined, you know, aspects of the human body and it collaborates with stuff that we see, you know, through the Hubble telescope, everything is interacted. Yes. And eventually we'll get to the point where we will understand. And that's where, you know, these deep states of meditation, which, which is our heritage. That's what, that's what we're here for is to raise our consciousness to, to achieve these states of deep meditation, nirvana, cosmic consciousness, and when a yogi or an adept, eventually that's that's our heritage. When we become that in deep cosmic consciousness, we become com completely, totally aligned with with the cosmos, with the earth, and everything. And that's our heritage, not these, not this terrible situation that we, the man-made situation that we find ourselves into. I mean, won't you agree, gentlemen? I do. Oh, yeah. Yes, absolutely.
<clears throat> me and David was just having a conversation about that stuff yesterday. Yeah, we were. I was. Yeah. I asked him. I said, "Why are we even here?" Right. I mean, what's the purpose of life yeah. for us? And, and we need to question that. Absolutely. It's just. Yep. Uh, it's just. Sometimes it's hard for me to. To get a hold of why I'm here. I mean, do I have a purpose? What am I fulfilling? Well, my yogi master wrote a wonderful book called The Nine Freedoms. And um, it's available on on Amazon. And it outlines from higher beings the exact reason why we're here, where we're going, what what our future is, and uh, the history of mankind, and and where where we go from here. But... um, Bottom line is, you know, um, my yogi master, Dr. George King, was a, was a was an adept in his own right, and he said, "There's only one reason we're here on this planet, not two. There's only one reason, and that's to raise the power within us, the power of Kundalini, uh, raise it up through the psychic senses, and achieve these deep state states of mm. meditative. Now, listen to this: meditative joy and peace." not meditative pain and suffering, (laughs) you know, meditative joy and peace, you know, freedom, you know, uh, aligning our free will and uh, discipline ourselves may take many, many lives. That's how, that's our heritage. What do you think? What do you think that there's people on the, on this planet that uh, try to push the opposite of that on people? And it's usually when it's people in power or something, you know, they, they try to, um, make everybody else make their life a little more miserable if they can. What, what do you think well, those people do that? I know we talked uh, about I, it before on your last, on our last show. And <clears throat> you mentioned some stuff about, you know, lower based beings and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I, I strongly believe that, you know, we, the two parts of, of us, we have a lower self and we have a higher self and the lower materialistic self has pretty much ruled us for centuries, life after life, and doesn't want us to part of it, doesn't want part the the higher self or the higher aspect of our of, of ourselves to rise. And there are beings that control this planet, uh, not only on the physical realm, but on other realms below us that um, that don't want man to rise. That they they, uh, they have this lust for power. They they don't. They don't need money or jewelry or material things because they have all that. But the greatest, uh, the greatest con- conquest, you know, is is power over other people, power over souls, and and it's 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 been demonstrated right now, you know, um, it's with this war right now with, with Russia invading Ukraine again. It's a power trip, yeah. you know, controlling, mm-hmm. taking over, and you know, influencing somebody else's ideology on another people. And and that's been the status quo for many, many centuries. And again, you know, not to bring your listeners down. Um, and, and yeah, who, who, who amongst us as a sensitive individual, you know, doesn't get down. I mean, I, 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 I sometimes wake up in fear and anxiety and depression. And, and I think it's normal because, uh, Anybody who's sensitive has to feel this and has to feel what's going on. But, but I, I, I definitely believe, um, David and Jason, that we are on the crossroads, and this, this is this is the, this is the beginning of the end of mankind as we know it in a in a very positive way. And 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 you know the Bible talks about end of times and. You know, other religions talk about the coming of a great of a, of a messiah or an avatar to work to lead people. I think these these are these definitely are end days, uh, and I think um, you know the, the forces of darkness which have been ruling us centuries and centuries. They, I think it's I think it's their last stand because well, the two aspects behind it. First of all, we're in the Aquarian age. And just astrologically speaking, the lines of planets to the point where we're being pushed to 
understand that we are, you know, one race. We are a brother's keeper. And, we, you know, in order for us to evolve, we have to help each other. Uh, and the other aspect of it, which which the media, the governments, still refuse to talk about, is the fact that it's Earth herself, country goddess, Mother Earth, who's given us space refuge for centuries, has been asked to raise her vibration. So her, every year, she's releasing energies, which is raising the vibration. So again, you know, this climate change, there are small percentages to do with, with the pollution. Well, with the carbon emissions, but the ice caps melting and and the weather changing, and you know all this was predicted uh, twenty, thirty years ago um, by these higher beings that these changes would occur, and it's also a part of the change that's occurring to the Mother Earth. Uh, in in the years to come, uh, part of this change is that is that you know this up there will be this upheaval, but eventually. Um, the, the the weather conditions will be so ambient there won't be uh, there won't be spring summer fall or winter as we know it it will be just a very ambient uh, uh, weather conditions around the planet uh, similar to say you know like Hawaii they have pretty much the same weather conditions year out and that's going to occur around the planet so it's part you know it's part of part of her changing her vibration and and people who conform to to the change of vibrations and raise her, raise their vibrations by, you know, channeling this energy, cosmic energy of love to other people, to themselves, to their families, um, will be they will be kind of allowed in a way to stay on this earth, and and all the warmongers and politicians and looters, you know, they won't be able to withstand these vibrations. So in the centuries to come, they will not be, they will not stay on Earth. They will be taken to another planet to, re, to start a reincarnation cycle there. And uh, that's, it's not a, it's not a case of might. This is what will happen in the future. So again, uh, the choice is ours. We can regress and uh, involve ourselves again through war, which we're doing again. Through um, political unrest, through um, you know pollution, uh, ignorance, greed. I mean, you know. So the choice is ours, and 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 these people behind the scenes or people in power, they they listen to their lower aspects, and you know, which which is I guess it's all part of the part of all creation, but. But the call for action these days is to is to open ourselves up, and listen to our higher selves, our higher being, and uh, I guess that's the difference between a, a Mahatma Gandhi and a Jesus and a Buddha and a and a Jesus as compared to a, a Hitler and a Mussolini and a Putin and all these other crazy people. <laughs> so it's uh, you know it, it's just basic logic. We think about it. I know um, before we got on air, we was kind of talking a little bit about um, this last this week where where they came out and was going to tell us about the you know the UFOs and and all this other stuff, and it was a little bit more just run around. Yeah, I mean the the, the red tape is there. Uh, uh, they the, the, not only our government. The, all, all the government, um, the uh, the cosmic beings, spoke through my master. They they made a statement years ago that they said that flying saucers are real. Flying saucers are friendly. Your government knows this, and so the government um, they've known of of, of observational craft uh, that have, that have been picked up on their radar systems. Uh, that, that orbit the Earth and still are orbiting orbit, orbit the Earth, uh, you know, from from other planets, and they're aware of these things. And uh, um, I, th- I think part of it, uh, they're, they're they're aware of, you know, uh, I mean, the Navy I and mean, all these uh, incidents that have occurred, you know. Um, I, I think I think they're, they're they're deliberately hiding it 
because I, I don't, if they find, if the public find out that we're being observed and we're being inspired by highly evolved beings, not only technically, scientifically, millions of years ahead of us, but also spiritually, who would they turn to? You know, I, I turn to the high peak. I don't turn to any politician right. or general or, or billionaire. Their motives are not, they're not pure. You know, I mean, we worship materialism. We worship billionaires. And then these billionaires turn around and screw everybody else by keeping, keeping people under control. So if, if they reveal to the masses that these higher beings exist, of course, we're all going to turn to them for inspiration. And, um, and uh, I, you know, f- for me, having some experiences out in the wilderness myself and, and validating some of the concepts that my own yogi master has, these beings, um, you know, uh, they, they regard our nuclear missiles as, as harmless toothpicks. That's the kind of power that these people have. Uh, and they could they could easily uh, take over this planet if they want to, but they, 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 that's not their intention. Well, you know, their intention is, yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, um, you know, uh, on that line right there where he is talking about where they, um, you know, our technology to them is might as well be us trying to throw stones or something, <clears throat> and them not being harmful. I can see that because there's been multiple instances that people have you know, swore to that they've had radar locks on these things right. and it do something to jam them to where they couldn't fire. They couldn't even get the lock right. on them anymore. Um, in, in the early days of the uh, atomic bomb and stuff um, all over the world, our military has had these craft come over where nuclear yep. armaments were and them shut them down when boom, 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 just shut them yep. down. Like, yeah. Look, I can turn you off. I mean, that's how powerful yeah. we are. We can just turn you off. So, you know, and um, when you see that, how can you say, you know, like a lot of these people, and what do you hear a lot um, in this UAP reports when it first started coming out and everything was threat, threat, threat analysis, yeah. threat analysis. Yeah. And it's like the threat, I, I can't see how there could be a threat because right. they've proven that if at any time they wanted to, they could just go whoop. And would be gone. Yep. Well, Dr. King asked these, asked them. He said, "How long would it take for you to completely control uh, the planet?" They said, "Within ten to fifteen minutes." Wow. To completely control us, but they're not here for that. They're, they're, wow. they're, they're, you know, these these people are beyond wars. They're beyond. Uh, they say that they're uh, the political system of Earth is, is 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 one of the biggest jokes they have on their their own uh, presidents. It's so archaic. It's so stupid. It, it, you know, it, it's division, and they yes. don't believe in division. They believe in believe in a unity. And I, I think also, David, you mentioned that, like they had the public hearing, and then they had the closed hearing. Yes, right. Yeah, the secret <laughs> hearing afterwards. It's like, well, why aren't you telling us? You know. Yeah, that's that's where they really reveal to to each other the reality of it, which which they don't want to tell the public. Yeah. No, so um, you know, I mean, it's a joke because in in the old days you were laughed at if you can if you considered a believer in UFOs or life on other planets. Now it's the opposite. You know, you're you're considered rather weird if you if you don't believe that because tech, science and technology has advanced so much. I mean, just in this in this galaxy, well, we have hundred million stars or something. So the idea being propounded first of all that there's no life on other planets is just laughable and then you know for them to to say that you know that uh, they, they don't understand what, what this area phenomenal is is just you know but in the end you know lies eventually truth will overcome these lies and th- that's what I really liked about about my own yogi master is that when he was in contact with these beings they they would for me, the ultimate proof was that um, in the early fifties, they would they would predict sightings uh, of their spacecraft uh, three weeks before they occurred. So they would say there will be sightings in New Zealand, Australia, USA, 
at this particular time, three three weeks. And sure enough, three weeks later, those exact sightings occurred. And you know, they actually had to had to stop those predictions because the um, uh, uh, the governments were scrambling aircraft to uh, to to uh, go and uh, you know try to destroy them, which was kind of laughable. So they yeah. had to stop that, even stop that. So to me, you know, that that to me was ultimate proof that that my own yogi master was in contact with these beings, and uh, and they do come in peace. I think the um, uh, the aspect of, of fear uh, is, is is being thrown out. At the, I mean, I'm not saying that all aliens, you know, in this galaxy are are, are nice. Right. I, I, no, that's that's incorrect, and. And uh, they they did mention that uh, this planet itself has been attacked a few times by uh, evil uh, aliens from other parts of this galaxy and beyond. Well, you know, um, where, where, where they were actually um, protected by by the beings, you know, the, the cosmic beings that, that are observing us. They actually had to be protected because we we had no chance against these um, uh, alien. Uh, extraterrestrial aliens that did try to take over the planet, and so yeah, there is there is evil forces out there. But at the same time, I believe that also we've been protected as well because we we would have stood no chance against any invading alien force. I mean, if you imagine, you know, the the kind of technology that they would use to come from maybe another galaxy or another part of the another or another part of this galaxy. Um, with, with our primitive <laughs> uh, scientific prowess and limited military uh, might, they would have they would have taken over in seconds. So yeah, I think we have that too. Also, thank thank these uh, sentient beings who are taking care of us right now. But there's a there's a line of thought, um, you know, and there's people talking about star seeds and the galactic federation. And they're, 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 you know, a lot of people have been deluded to think that if we start a nuclear war, that they'll just suddenly land and save us. It's not going to work that way because they didn't stop, you know, they didn't stop Hiroshima. They didn't stop the, the killing of the uh, six million Jews. Yeah. You know, I mean, they, they're not allowed. Yeah, they're not allowed to come in and intervene in our own personal. Now, if they if they try to mess with the planet, planet Earth. They could probably intervene to protect her, but in regards to our own stupidity, uh, they're not allowed. So, if we start, if if this, uh, let's hope to God it doesn't. But if this, uh, you know, if this uh, Ukraine Russia thing goes crazy and does start World War Three, they're not they're not going to intervene. You know, and Dr. King said mankind may have to go through two hundred nuclear wars before he gets it. And so it's up to us that we have to we have to intervene on our behalf. And the way they're asking us to do that is to send this spiritual energy out to to everybody and uh, and neutralize this this, uh, this hatred. You know, uh, you was talking about the you know that there's aliens out there and there's multiple different ones. And I think it was you and I talking about that earlier uh, this week, weren't we, Jason? where I was talking about that, <clears throat> you know, if you look in our own records of our own history, you have multiple different kinds that, that have been noticed throughout history. Like, so the uh, Indians um, and um, in India and in um, ancient Egypt, you had these blue gods that were blue right. um, in Mesopotamia and stuff like that. You had these lizard type gods and, um, uh, and so you could tell that there's more than one type of being out there, um, yeah. you know, coming down to this planet to visit, to, to do whatever it is that they come to do. And, uh, so to, you know, I think a lot of people want to just look at that and say, oh, that's just made up history. Well, it's awfully funny that that made up history is all over this planet. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. They, they can't, um, you know, they, they can, they, they, they it's impossible to to argue against against proven facts, but um, but the, the the thing about my master is that he always 
said, if you want to, if you want to know about the truth, he said, always speak the truth. So he would always come in front of the podium and make a solemn declaration before he's created that he would speak the truth. So a lot of the things that he said have come true in many, many ways. When he did talk about, you know, um, conditions of earth and what's going to happen, the, 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 the weather changes and the raising of the mother earth. But that's all, it's all started. Um, but, you know, again, to, 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 to help your listeners, um, in, in the nine freedoms, he, uh, he talks about projecting from his physical body and he, he actually visited this spacecraft that comes into periodic orbit of a uh, spacecraft by the name of satellite number three. He said it was about a mile and a half long, X-shaped. And it was, he said there was many beings that, that, that control this massive spacecraft. Um, and he was actually invited uh, aboard there and he saw instrumentation, radionic, uh, computer systems, which again, they said would defy the imagination of even the greatest scientists on earth. See, this this goes beyond science fiction. Uh, either my master was a good was was a fraud, or he was he, or, or he was a genius. And I I did my own investigation. So, you know, if people want to investigate, it's it's always good to investigate before you make your opinion. Yeah. And so I did my research, and I, I believe that he was definitely in contact. And, and later he was told with these, this instrumentation that they have, um, you know, is if you look at basic terrestrial technology these days with a GPS satellite, you can pinpoint anybody on the planet that's, that's on a cell phone. And that's just basic. Now, if you advance that two, three million years ahead scientifically, these beings uh, have the vibrational sequence Every man, woman, child, plant, anim, plant, animal, fish, rock on the planet. So they have a complete dossier of everything that's living on this planet, either in the past, now, or in the future. And they have a complete control. So we're all known, every single live stream, me, you, all the listeners, everybody from deepest Africa to, to the Eskimos to, uh, to the Russians, to the Chinese, every single live stream is 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 has is, you know has a vibrational sequence that's on their computer systems on on this giant spacecraft, and it and it comes into orbit. And people talk about c- contacting higher beings. We can all, you know, um, using our uh, using our mind or, te- or using te- telepathy. telepathy. <laughs> my 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 kind of tongue twist, but <laughs> telepathically, um, we can we can tune into this spacecraft and 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 visualize a, a beam of energy coming through, and the the um, computer systems, these radionic con- computer systems, will pick up uh, our our pattern and send energy to any individual, so they can send not only to like a hundred million people at a time, but to one individual who's, who wants to send out his projection. This is this gentleman to me uh, as coming from a technical background as a field service engineer and repairing computer systems for a while. This is science fiction beyond, this is beyond science fiction. It's so, it's so beyond because sometimes it's that truth is stranger than fiction. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is something that that that, that even a science fiction writer can't even uh, fathom, and and this is real. This is act- absolutely real because, again, I I believe uh, my master was a yogi master and 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 was a channel. And if it's real, I think it's the greatest hope I've ever come across in, in my whole in my whole life because it it gives hope. It's like we're not be- we're not being left alone. There's no one single live stream like, you know, you had a crazy week. Uh, you know, Jason had a bad day. Everybody's having a, but we're all being monitored. We're all, all our thought patterns are known. And because of that, we can reach to these higher, these higher uh, beings, these higher cosmic beings and draw inspiration and strength and guidance and healing. So we have an avenue open. Uh, in the skies above us right now, 
uh, to change not only ourselves for the better, but to change the whole planet. Uh, uh, to me, guys, it, to me, it's the greatest thing I've ever come across in my life. It gives hope. I don't have to rely on any politician or billionaire or, you know, general. I don't have to rely on their lies. I can rely on something that's more powerful than any of them that has been observing us for the last 18 million years. Um, that's why I'm on the program today, because that's what I believe in. Yeah, I think, um, you know, for for me, <clears throat> I've always thought there was something else. Um, I was the odd, odd sheep. I was the black sheep of the family. Um, I grew up in a very, very religious home. Um, went to Christian private schools and everything. <clears throat> and um, I just didn't feel that I was being told the truth. Right. And um, and I started having dreams. Now, I growing up, I started seeing, I guess you could say, <laughs> dead people for any better uh, mm-hmm. stretch of the imagination. Um, well, I, you're a psychic. You have your psychic abilities, yeah. Yeah, I started seeing them when I was three, <clears throat> which is pretty scary for a three-year-old. Um, but by the time I was about eight or nine years old, I started having dreams. And what was weird about it, and this took me off into a completely different area from my what I was raised at, because... <clears throat> We were raised pretty strict for a very long time. We didn't even have a TV in the house because that was of the devil, right? I mean, we didn't. We didn't. If it wasn't church related, we weren't allowed to listen to it, look at it, or talk about it. Well, and, I agree with that. I, I agree that the TV is of the devil, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, for for the background on this is because I had no no way at that time of knowing what it was I was dreaming about. But I kept having reoccurring dreams of being this guy flying in a plane mm. and getting shot down and parachuting out. And I slept on the top bunk of my bunk beds <clears throat> oh. and I would jump off the bunk every night, boom, hit the ground and uh, and would wake up. And as I grew up and got older, I started wondering if I was actually remembering a past life. More than likely. Sure. <clears throat> and uh, that's what got me on the on this whole paranormal journey that I've been on ever since, uh, reading what I could get my hands on and just just seeing because I started thinking uh, maybe what we're told about this being it, the one time, that's it. You, you get one shot at this and that's it. Um, maybe that's not quite right. Well, you know that Christian scholars uh, come forward recently uh, and, and have said, based on their research, that reincarnation was actually taught in the Christian religion. It was stopped yes. 700 years ago. Yes. And they put in this one life rubbish so that, you know, it would control the masses. So either you, you, you know, you, this is the only life you have, and if you don't do uh, what we tell you, you're condemned to eternal hell and, and damnation, which again is just, personally, I think is an evil thing that they did to the masses. And so, yeah, I, you know, everybody has some glimpse, especially when they're younger, of you were more, more than likely you were a parachuter that would probably shut down. And, you know, these things, um, uh, especially in, in between young people, young kids, they remember this. I remember distinctly a past life. So, you know, again, that's one truth that has to be uh, brought back to, to, you know, to everybody on the planet. That reincarnation is a fact. You know, I, I have some good Christian friends, and as, um, some of them believe in, in reincarnation, and then some of them are very orthodox. I talk to them; they don't want to come near it. I mean, uh, I was raised in a, a Muslim background, and well, you mentioned reincarnation. They go out, you know, because they, you know we've been people are so indoctrinated with dogma that you mention something that's true. And they, they, they just go crazy because part of them doesn't want to want to accept the you know, reality. But the reality of reincarnation is taught. For one thing, people will think twice before going to war, knowing that, you know, they, they could be either murdering, you know, their father or mother or sister or brother in a previous life. So 
that aspect of, of reincarnation is what the cosmic beings are also, um, uh, you know, saying that, that that needs to be reintroduced. Reintroduce, and they said that the, the the leaders of the of the religions that are hiding the truth of reincarnation. This is a very interesting prophecy that they said. They said they will they will be replaced by those who will uh, open up this truth. So, a hundred percent agree with you, uh, David. That uh, you know uh, you you are definitely going through an experience of a past life for sure. Yeah, I just um, you know, I didn't have any anyone. You know, if I tried to talk to somebody about it, they thought I was you know crazy. <laughs> and um, I mean, it it still persists to this day a little bit. I mean, almost everybody who knows me knows what I'm into by now. You know, but I've been into this. <clears throat> like I said, it's been a life journey for me um, since I was a little kid. I've just felt, I just, I have always felt that I've not been told the hundred percent truth. And so I've been in search of that truth and I can't even say if I've ever really found it, but I've, I've definitely done a lot of studying, um, on different religions and on different, you know, um, ways of, of believing in, in different things. And, and, um, you know, from, from UFOs to the paranormal, which I kind of say the paranormal, I lived with, with that, you know, been able to, like I was saying earlier, been able to see them from a young kid. Um, right. that was something that I just believed in because it was as real as, you know, talking to you right now. Right. Um, <clears throat> and it still is, uh, to this day, but, um, you know, um, the rest of it, I've just felt like I need to learn more. That's what it is. I guess, you know, I'm trying to say is that, is that, um, I've always felt that I, I've I need to learn more about this this these topics, and uh, and and because, like I said, I just don't feel like like we're ever told the truth. Well, there's a part of us that, that wants the truth. You know, a, a higher part of us wants the truth, and those and if you're searching for truth, you eventually it will be revealed to you. And so, you know, you know, it's it's important to keep searching and find find the truth. I mean, people are even questioning the star of Bethlehem now. Was it really a star? You know, is such a, such a thing a star that guided the three wise men over the stable and hovered over the stable, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it was it doesn't sound table. to me like a star. <laughs> no, not me. That, stars don't quite do that, do they? No. So mm-hmm. even, even, even that's being questioned. Well, you know, I've, I've I've thought of things like that too, like in the Bible, you know, it talks about when the children of Israel were wandering the, you know, the forests for for those 40 years and um, they were being followed by a pillar of fire at night and a a cloud by day. And to me, that just sounds like a a UFO. Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. I mean, um, it it doesn't sound of this earth, I guess, you know. Ezekiel's wheel, you know. Yes, wheel within the wheel. Nothing to the clown, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then you know you get the same thing when, when when you start talking about <clears throat> you know people being taken up in a in a chariot of fire and yeah and and all this. I mean, it's time and time and time again you hear it, but people try to put other explanations for it, and I just think that they they couldn't quite explain what it was that they really were seeing. See, also, Dave, as a kid, when you saw other people. Well, again, uh, that confirms that, you know, there's no such thing as death. Yes. There's only change. And, you know, there, there are invisible realms, which unless you're psychic like yourself, or if you've been trying to be a psychic, you won't be able to even understand that they're even there. And uh, yes. uh, I, I had a friend of mine, he had a terrible motorcycle accident, and then he died, and he went through, you know, the white light, and he, he saw all his relatives waiting there for him, talking to him. And then I guess he wasn't ready, and he came back into his body. So, um, you know, uh, again, uh, you know, um, if you're an adept, you can you can project to these realms. Uh, Dr. King says there's six realms above us, and there's four realms below us called the lower astral realms. And um, so, when we die, there's no such thing. We just we just move to a different vibration based on our based on our vibration. So there's no 
there's no judge that's going to judge us. We just go to these realms based on our own vibrations. So, you so, know, if, if, yeah. Would that, <clears throat> would, when you say projecting himself or at, would that be like an out of body experience? Yeah. I mean, you're, we, uh, we have an out of body experience every night. It's called sleep. Yeah, yes, uh, yes, when, yes. when part, part of us, uh, part of our consciousness actually projects and goes to these different realms. So we have different experiences, different dreams. Most of the time we don't remember them, but, um, a yogi master, when they have con- complete control over his internal uh, vibrations, can raise the consciousness and then consciously project and not completely have a, a complete memory of where they projected to. And and Dr. King was able to project to all these realms. And uh, and so, like I say, if you let, if you led, led a decent spiritual life, you'll probably go to some of the high realms. And if you've been a rapist or a murderer or a, you know, yeah. or whatever you 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 go to these uh, low realms, and again, these are not punishments. These are just places you go to based on your vibration. Yeah. And uh, in, in these low realms, there, there are there are definitely um, magicians, or they call them black magicians. I mean, not talking about any particular race or something. Just a, just a vibration of black energy. Um, but they they they've able to hold up their reincarnation cycle and, and become very, uh, very powerful in these realms. And, um, Dr. King went to these realms. He said, uh, he said science there is like 200 years advanced. They have, you know, advanced aircraft, laser systems, uh, weaponry, which is 200 years, uh, more technically advanced. So they're not just a bunch of like, you know, who, uh, horn, Headed kind of uh, creatures that that you know Dan, Dante's Inferno referred to, but highly, highly cl- uh, clever and uh, very versatile beings, and they're the ones that uh, throughout the hi- history of our planet have, have you know I, I don't think any war uh, was was haphazardous. It was all planned, and a war is planned by these dark forces. They you know, they influenced, they mentally influenced Hitler, caused tremendous, um, I mean, Hitler was pretty much under the influences of these black magicians of dark forces, as was, you know, Himmler, Julius Caesar, and Genghis Khan, and all these tyrants. They were, they were just as, they were under control of these beings, because creating war would mean that, um, uh, the, the people who died in the suffering, whatever, would go to these lower realms and become and become pawns uh, of these of these uh, these magicians in these lower realms. So it was like a recruiting system. So all the wars throughout the centuries, uh, you know, uh, all, all of them um, uh, uh, were specially planned, and, and and even this war. That we're currently seeing was special, has been specially planned. It's not. It's not haphazardous. Uh, these are influences by these beings. So, on that's the dark side of, of us. That's that's really what's occurring right now. You know, with with the uh, political unrest and and you know the uh, the, the famines and, and and all this terrible stuff. And and then the, on the other hand, we have higher beings that were influenced by the higher. And so those higher beings, uh, uh, which also reside on the high realms, which which were known as the spiritual hierarchy of Earth, who actually live with, uh, in, in different retreats around the around the planet, and they're also involved in in protecting. And so there is not only a physical wars that are going on on this planet, but there's an invisible energy war, a kind of a spiritual war. Uh, behind the scenes, between these dark forces of darkness, who are sending out these evil influences to help control and to recruit, uh, you know, people who pass on to be part of their, you know, evil armies in the lower astral realms, and then we have the ascended masters of this planet um, who, who who are on the high realms, uh, who, who again are in, engaged in. You know, energy battle between these people, and so that's going on 
right now, 24 hours a day as we speak. And so, again, if we want to make the world a better place, we have to uh, be helping uh, forces of light. And of course, all the religions talk about the battle between good and evil, but it's actually occurring right now as as we're talking. We're just not aware of it because we're not we're not that psychic, or we can't tune in to what's going on. But people like my master and other masters are, are able to project and see these things happening, and actually uh, engaged in some of these uh, these, these battles that occurred in these lower astral realms, and so a lot of them. A lot of these forces in these uh, lower realms are actually now being transmuted, um, and and they know that their end end is in sight because as the Earth raises the vibrations, these lower astral realms will not be able to exist, and again they will be taken from this Earth to another uh, lower, uh, younger world. So they know that their demise is occurring. So they're trying as much as possible create a scenario like World War Three, create this um, this upheaval, continuous upheaval, so that they can feed. You know, they don't live on water and food, but they live on the vibrations, the suffering vibrations of mankind. Yes. And these energies, that they're like psychic vampires. Yes. They feed on this energy that, that gives them power. <laughs> so again, we've been told to arise en masse in peace, change our mindset to a global mindset and start sending uh, this, this uh, you know, this, this great energy of the cosmos, the energy of love, and, and transmit it. Because we're, 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 we're energy receivers and, and transmitters. And, all, and the basic question is, what do, what, we don't, what do we need to do this battle? And all we have to do is look up to the heavens, send out this energy through us, through our psychic sensors, in the palms of our hand from the heart center and just generally send it out. I mean, you know, think about it. If I just say me before like a football game or a, or a sports event, if people were just told to raise their hands five minutes and send out power, I mean, this could, that could just transform the planet. That's the only thing we haven't really done, guys, on mass. We've tried it. We've done everything else and nothing's worked. The only solution... Uh, to 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 change this world is, is is to change the energy balance, and that's one thing that that just goes over the head of people when you talk, tell them to send out energy, uh, and it's, it's it's because it's so simple it goes over the heads. But if the media and the government uh, told people, you know, and again, you don't it don't you don't even have to b- believe in a divine source. It doesn't matter what religion or race or creed or sexual background it doesn't it doesn't matter in these days the only thing that matters in these days is spiritual service which is sending this energy out and and that's the call of action that uh, not only myself but thousands of other people are, are trying to do but to try to make this change on this planet and, and change conditions for the better it's great yeah that's awesome <laughs> yeah good and evil but, you know that's but it's real, it, yeah. it, you know, it, there, there is evil. And, you know, they said, well, you know, some religious people, well, God won't allow it. Well, God's not God's not uh, responsible for man's free will. We, right. we were given this free will, and so we, we, can, we can, you know, it's not God's fault that there's all this suffering. It's man's fault. It's our fault. We created it. Right. And, you know, and we have to reach up to this divine power or the cosmic power. And, and you know, we have to make the change. You know, like Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change you want to see on this world. And so um, eventually, man, eventually we'll, we'll conform to it. Because, like I said, all these other things have been tried and nothing, you know, the political, the monetary system, you know, they say that the monetary system is the... Uh, is the cancer in the heart of spiritual man? Look at Sri Lanka right now. They're, they're, I mean, it just appalls me. They're in, they're in default. To uh, the, uh, countries actually borrow money from the IMF and all these monetary financial institutions. I, I, you know, it appalls me. So they're defaulted on their uh, their interest. They, they they have to pay 
68 million dollars interest on their loan while they while you know all, all their people are suffering i mean it's atrocious yeah. so you got corporations that actually control uh countries and and they they they, they will actually put down their credit rating so it happened to um uh, happened to Costa Rica, it happened to uh, Greece, and so these countries are, are, are being held in, you know, uh, as hostage, uh, monetary hostages by these large financial inst- institutions that have well, given mar- money. Can you imagine sixty-eight million dollars interest payment wow. that a country has to pay, and it hasn't. That's not. That's not even the principal. I mean, talk about. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> money is the root to all evil. I think the love of money. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, all this, all this right. uh, debt. There's no such thing as debt. This is all. This is all conjured up by by these financial institutions. There's no such thing as debt. Uh, you right. know, this 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 planet has. Ev- we have everything. Every man, woman, and child can be fed, clothed. And sheltered, uh, but these 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 forces of darkness, you know, behind the scenes, they don't they don't want that. They want to keep control. So again, you know, we have to break that cycle. We can't we can't rely on the higher beings. The higher beings will send us the power, but we we have you know they they they're not coming to the UN. They're not coming to the president. I mean, they've approached government. Yeah, and they approached the UN. And and they've they've even approached the Vatican, and they said they were turned down by the Vatican, you know. So they, who who are they approaching? Just like Jesus did in, when he was alive, he approached the common man. He, mm-hmm. he didn't he didn't approach the elders of the of the synagogues, or the kings, or the or the rich people. He right. approached every, the normal man on the street, and that's and that's what the cosmic beings are approaching now. They're relying on the normal me, you, and and Joe, everybody, uh, to rise up in 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 mass, you know, in, in peace, and uh, make a mental revolution, and uh, that's the call of action of of, of the day. Yeah, uh, well, Gene, we're going to take a quick break. If that's okay with you? Uh, Absolutely. So we can uh, get a little bathroom break and. And get some advertisement in. and All right. Um, we'll be right back with you here in a second, Wajid. Um, we're talking to uh, Wajid Hassan. Uh, he has a book called The Struggle for World Sanity. Number one bestseller. Yeah, it's it's a great book. I have read it. It is awesome. Um, his website is also linked at our website at paranormal411.org. Remember, we are live on Spreaker and on Podbean, but you could also come over to paranormal411.org and uh, come into our chat room and listen to the listen to the show and, and chat with us there, too. Um, we also want to thank all of our premium members. Um, you help make this possible, but everybody here does, for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, every listener, we're, we're really appreciative of all of you. And um, so you're listening to Paranormal 411. Your hosts are Jason and David, and we'll be back after this quick break. Thanks for listening to the show. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter at Paranormal 411. Join us on the website at Paranormal411.org. It's free to sign up and become a member. All of our upcoming shows are on the guest and events page. You can also listen to past shows on the website as well. And if you like the show and want to support us, you can do that by becoming a premium member for only $2 a month. Thanks for listening to Paranormal 411. Join us. This is Jeff Reagan of the band Catalyst. Visit Paranormal 411. Click on our link on the right-hand side to listen to or purchase any of our albums on BandLab. In a world on the edge of oblivion, go to paranormal411.org for all of your paranormal, extraterrestrial, 
and cryptid needs. Welcome back. Welcome back from that quick break. Quick uh, break. Want to thank uh, <coughs> Jeff and Catalyst for allowing us to use their music. Uh, that was a good song called "Dancing in the Rain." Again, if you want to listen to more of their music, you go to over to our website, paranormal411.org. Got a little place you could click right there on the front page and go over there. You can listen to all their music for free; doesn't cost nothing. And if you want to download it, then you can buy it by the, the song or the album. So. Um, it's pretty cool stuff. <clears throat> I also want to say we're talking to Wajid Hassan. He has a book called The Struggle for World Sanity. It is good. Also, I'd like to thank all the people in the chat rooms. Yes. Um, we got Mudgy, Shannon. Uh, Her dog, Christina, Jeff. South Oz, man. And uh, another one I can't pronounce, but. Yes. Thank you. Bird dog, Christina, Jeff. David, Jason. David and Jason. We're on the, we're in the chat room too. Um, and we also want to thank Was uh Wajid for being here tonight. Yes. Um absolutely. And um Wajid, we had a uh, a question that was asked um in the chat room. Um Bird Dog asked, um, do you so you don't believe in punishment for evil or bad behavior in this life? Um, you know, uh, you have to understand the law of karma and that's another spiritual aspect that that needs to be taught on top of reincarnation. Um, there's, there's no such thing as punishment, but there, you know, but as, as the master Jesus said, as you sow, so shall you reap. And so, you know, 
uh, they said that if you murder somebody in this life, you may even get away with it. Say if you hire a good lawyer in a good court, you may get away with it with man's law. But they said if you murder somebody, you too will either be murdered in this life or the next life. Again, not to punish me, punish you, but to teach you. So karma doesn't punish; it teaches. So you, we can't get away with anything. You know, action reaction is opposite and equal. We, you know, we 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 get back everything that we put out. So if we lead a life, you know, uh, that demands healing and being good and being charitable, then we, we then we'll receive that reaction back. And if we live a life that you know that's uh, that's evil, and you know we do bad things, uh, those will come back to us exactly. You know, so you know with these wars and people killing people, thinking that they've got, they, they've got away with it. Nobody gets away with anything. So, so again, uh, there is no punishment, but there is teaching, and the teaching can be very, very painful. And then. Um, so you know, does, it's been set. Yeah, I was just going to say. So, does that teaching um, should it also then uh, teach that um, we shouldn't hate because the like you said, the law of karma, or what goes around comes around, or however you want to put it, um, will teach us the lesson that we need that that person needs to learn. So, to hate them is also wrong. Well, h- hating is actually worse than hitting somebody. They said because when you hate somebody, you actually project. Uh, thoughts are real just because we can't see again if you're psychic you can see thoughts and the hateful thought is like a murky like brown reddish uh, energy that, that emanates from you to to the aura of that other person and it actually does physical damage to that other person because it pierces the aura of that other person that you hate and, and like a rapier and just and, and will affect their aura which reflects on their physical body so Hate and jealousy and greed and avarice; those those are energy, and and uh, you know we get the repercussions of that. You know, it's been said. You know, what, what did the what did Jesus say? He said, he said, uh, easier for a camel to go through through the eye of a, of a needle than a rich man to 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 you know to be you know placed in heaven. I mean, people who who are rich, like billionaires and millionaires, they squander their riches and they don't use them to help other people. They may come back uh, as a child in abject poverty and starvation, again, not to punish them, but to teach them, you know. They may not even remember their last life, but they they can't escape the law of karma. And uh, there was a case of a child in India. She remembered very poor child and she remembered that she was lord of a manor in Scotland in her last life and she had all these riches and uh, she distinctly remembered that so we can't get away with anything but we're not punished uh, I think the lords of karma don't punish they, they teach but uh, just like you know sometimes we have to you know um, be strict to a child or a little or an animal that we're looking after because it's done something wrong. The Lords of Karma do that, but sometimes uh, the teaching is, is very, very harsh. Uh, uh-huh. And, uh, you know, so, and, and again, it's not for me to judge another person. There's some, people, there's some places like in India where they believe in reincarnation and, and they see a beggar or a blind man, they go, well, that's, that's his karma from a last life. You're also incurring bad karma by doing that. Instead of helping that person, you can make come you may come back as a blind man because you bypassed a blind man. You know? so uh, the, the you know the the law of karma is I think it's a, it's a law. It's not God itself, but it's it is a divine law. And it's absolutely just, not like man's law. So everything that I that I deserve in this life. But, you know, I mean, I'm human. I made some very, very bad mistakes. And I've done some things that I'm not proud of. And they've all come back to haunt me. I can't get away with anything. So the teaching is, you know, conform to the law, which is conform to good, and you'll, and you'll get good back. I mean, it's, 
it's it's so simple. <laughs> Again, just like spiritual energy, it goes over people's head. You know, those are the things that need to be taught to the kids in school before math and hygiene is is reincarnation, the law of karma. You know, basic spiritual laws like thou shalt not kill. You know, those things. So, yeah, no, we don't get punished, but the teachings are sometimes very, very painful. Right. And um, so if you don't remember your past life, how do you learn those lessons? Or is it the higher self that learns those lessons? Well, the higher self sets those uh, lessons for you. And there's a certain mercy, I guess, in the law. I mean, I, I don't want to know past lives where maybe I was a soldier that killed civilians. So maybe in mercy, you're not told about these things. But obviously, I have to accept the reality of my situation. And no matter what I think could have, should have, would have, I have to accept that this is my reality right now, talking to you guys at this particular time this is my reality and this is what i i have achieved and deserved in my past and my present and that's where i'm at right now and so acceptance has you have to i have to accept the reality of my situation and uh, change for the better yeah that makes a lot of sense to me you know um not to go back too far but we was talking about before the break you know you was talking about <clears throat> excuse me the um your master uh that talked to you about different planes and it's funny because i've always told people and i've always explained it the way that i've understood it just for myself and maybe i put it too scientifically but you know i always thought of it as as different dimensions um yeah so um you know like higher beings or, 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 or things live on different dimensions. And that's the way it, I felt like when I was, when I would see spirits, it was like they, they were real. I mean, there was as tangible looking as, as myself, but, right. But right. it was like, they were coming from another dimension. Like, like they didn't, they don't live here, but they can visit here. Yeah, and, and Dr. King said if you go to these different dimensions, you, you're on the same vibrational sequence. So if you sit in a chair, you will actually sit on a physical chair. They're just He said they're just as physical as this realm. They're just on a different vibration. They're more subtle, but we, we, we conform to that uh, that same vibration. And he says if you hit your head on, on, on a wall, you will hurt your head on, on, this, on these dimensions. And, and again... You know, okay, just looking at planet Earth, if these dimensions are there, six above and the four below, you know, Dr. King said that every every uh, planet in this solar system is inhabited. Now, when he said that in the 50s and 60s, they all laughed at him. And it's true, if you go to uh, Mars or Venus on the physical realm, the chances of you seeing life is probably minimum. But these beings live on the higher dimensions of these of these realms. So he talked about in the 50s and 60s going to Mars and going to Venus and and confirming conferring and meeting with these you know uh, highly advanced civilizations. And he was laughed at. Now quantum physics is is catching up to the metaphysician. And these days they they are talking about parallel universes. They are talking about different vibrations, different dimensions. And so, um, Dr. Dean said, you could be on Mars for, a, you could, you know, man could go to Mars tomorrow and inhabit Mars for like a hundred years and not even be aware of a higher civilization unless, unless he could, he could project or, or psychically, um, or, or they would introduce themselves. But, uh, so these beings, that they mentioned, you know, the man, the, the spacecraft, the flying sources, I mean, they, They've been seen to like blink into existence mm-hmm. and then blink out of existence. So they 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 manip- you know they can manipulate um, material. They can you know they can go from dimension to dimension in their spacecraft. And so um, you know ag- again this 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 is slowly being proved by science. And so yeah, he said that every every planet, I think he said with the exception of Mercury in this solar system is, is, is inhabited by higher civilizations on these higher dimensions. 
And so, again, coming back to Earth, if we can understand Earth and these high dimensions on Earth, which most people don't even recognize, then, it, again, it makes logical sense that these high dimensions must exist on, on other planets as well. Right. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Um, do you think that that's also why um, you see these uh, spacecraft that are able to just seem like they go in, in and out of mountains, um, in and out of the oceans and things like that, because it's a, it's just a interdimensional type thing. Well, I mean, just when they're in the physical realm, they can do things with no space aircraft, terrestrial aircraft. And it's been proven by some of these Pentagon tapes, you know, the maneuvers and everything that they do, you know, which would, which would crush crush a a normal craft with the G-forces, the way they move and and blink in and out and and move up and down. Um, I had an incident uh, a few years back. I was out in the Mojave Desert with a couple of friends of mine, and we we experienced a a UFO that appeared across the mountains, and it it changed colors. And then it hovered over where we were and and kind of flashed at us in in a recognition that, they recognized that we were watching them and observing them. And then all of a sudden, it lifted up vertically at this colossal speed and just into space, which was like just phenomenal, phenomenal speed and just disappeared into the heavens. So this is this is stuff that no aircraft, terrestrial aircraft, would ever do. Because their technology, like you said, is, is millions of years ahead of us. So we can't understand that technology yet. But, uh, you know, just like they laughed, you know, the early early pioneers, they said that the earth was not flat and it revolved around the sun. They were considered heretics and, you know, and mm-hmm. Do- Dr. King was con- considered a, a heretic and, and a loony bin. And, you know, so was Galileo and all the other great pioneers in the past. And it was only... I don't think Dr. King will be recognized probably for another thousand years based on on some of the teachings that he that, he, that he's propounded because people we we were all conditioned we're all conditioned from birth you know we're told not to play you know that there's no such thing as gnomes and fairies in the garden that we're playing with nature spirits so oh that's in your imagination oh, well I had a recollection recollection of a past life oh it's all in your imagination. Stop thinking about that, and you know, and and being poopard and 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 molded and mentally hypnotized to the point where when we when we become adults, if there's anything new that's propounded to us, you know, we 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 uh, we move away from it like a hot flame because part of us doesn't want to open ourselves up, and so I think there's an element of bravery that's just involved where we need to be brave enough to keep our minds open. Uh, two possibilities, but at the same time, we need to discriminate because there's a lot of junk out there. There's contactees that are not contactees, you know, and, and they're propounding a lot of stuff. And like I think you mentioned the, the evil aspect of flying saucers, and they're evil and they're ready to conquer the world. You know, all these yeah. things we have to be we have to be very careful of. That's why we need to use our intuition and and discrimination. Well, yeah, I mean, with you saying that, you know. If you if you um, think about it before you react, like I said, you know they like to use keywords of hostile and mm-hmm. and all these other things to try to get people you know worried about about it. It's I think it's another control mechanism, um, and or way at least to control the the dialogue and 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 what's going on in in that situation. But if you really stop and think about it logically for a minute. If something is that far more advanced, it can move faster, do do things. I mean, it right. can move supersonic without even a sonic boom. Um, right. It could do these things, and yet we are being told that it's possibly, you know, here to harm us. Uh, I, you know, like we was talking earlier, I just think that that's hogwash, because if they wanted to, it would have already been done. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I just, I just don't, I, I don't know. I just don't buy it, but <clears throat> you know, I don't buy a lot that 
<laughs> you know, you, you said something earlier too about, you know, vet everything you hear. Um, don't just believe it because someone said it. Um, go out and actually do the research and yeah, do and, you, yeah, do your research. Don't yeah. don't 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 allow don't don't take everything for granted. Right. Don't take what I take tell you for granted. You do your own research. Yes, and uh, make your own conclusion based on your. Again, I you know in my book I said that the the, that the greatest lie detector ever built on this planet is your intuition. Yes, you know part of you knows what's right and what's wrong. And uh, it's when we don't listen that we get ourselves in a lot of trouble. You know, and that's something and, that um, that I've been noticing myself here lately. I've been trying to <clears throat> um, do more self-reflection. And, yeah. and uh, I'm noticing that we, as people, um, tend to overlook things like that. Just the intuition. That gut feeling you get every once in a while, it's telling you something. Yeah. You know, stop and yeah. think about it. It's telling you something. And um, and sometimes, you know, we we need to take that second or two and stop and think about what is it trying to tell me? You know, what situation am I in that, that I don't need to be in, you know? Or even sometimes somebody else has, an, has a feeling and they tell you, you know, women, women are very psychic. Their intuition is generally better than men. And sometimes, you know, my mother would say things and I wouldn't listen to her and she was right. So sometimes other people tell you things, they get premonitions. And they say, hey, you know, I don't think you should be doing this, that and the other or going into this, that and the other. And uh, I didn't listen and it caused me a lot of problems. So, so yeah, absolutely, I agree. Definitely the story of my life. <laughs> Someone tell <laughs> well, me to know, do something? No, I'm doing the opposite. <laughs> but, you know, that's... That's just, 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 it's life. I mean, you know, uh, like you, I had, I had blinders on, you know, yeah. you know, it was, I, I did whatever I wanted to do. And then, you know, I had to pay the cost for it as well, but that's part of life. And so long as, so long as, uh, I learned my lesson and I don't do that again, um, that's the important thing. So if we do it again, that's, that's just being stupid. But if we learn and just, and don't repeat it, then 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 that's where we grow a little wiser. Yes. So yeah, but yeah, you know, who who amongst us is not, you know? Right. Well, I mean, like Jesus said, "Who who whoever's not thin, let him cast the first stone." That's you know? right. Absolutely. Yeah, we've we've all we've all been down the gutter, but you know, so long as we learn and and we, as long as we're progressing and trying to become better people. But well, that's the important thing is just keep on trying. And so long as we don't, you know, just give up, we just keep trying to be better people. And uh, it doesn't happen overnight. So see you and Jason not going to sprout halos and wings tomorrow. <laughs> not, that's, that's a guarantee. <laughs> I won't be able to walk through walls and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you. I, you know, I would have the, the best business in the world if I could – um, ascend and be able to transport stuff instantaneously somewhere. That'd be the, that'd be it. <laughs> that's uh, yeah. Doc King says that's how the pyramids were constructed. He said it took it took two years to plan, and I think they constructed them in three days. Wow! wow. Using telekinesis. Well, wow. that's something to think about. Isn't that amazing? That mm-hmm. is amazing. <laughs> <clears throat> now, do you believe that? Um, because they they've got some new dating techniques out now where they could date like some of the stones that are inside the pyramids uh-huh and by <clears throat> forgot exactly what it was called but it, it it has something to do with the light that it could tell the last time light hit those stones wow. and they're saying that the inner parts of the pyramid was built like you know, 15, 20,000 years ago and that the outside is newer. And what a lot of people are thinking is that over a period of, of centuries and stuff like that, things would happen and it would have to be the outside of it would need to be reconstructed or, or, or fixed over time. Right. And that's why you have newer stones and stuff on the outside is what you have on the inside, but it was protecting what was on the inside. Yeah, it's a possibility. 
possible. Do you have a uh, a theory on the pyramids, what they are? And uh, I haven't done too much research on the pyramids. Okay. But, uh, I like how they're aligned to to star formations. I think that's very interesting. Mm-hmm. And uh, there, there were, of course, radionic uh, instrumentation that that would channel the uh, energies from the Earth and on uh, other planes. So there were radionic instrumentations to maybe uh, create a kind of balance, natural balance around the Earth. Uh, but there's so many aspects of the pyramid that that uh, that's worth researching. So I haven't done that much research, but uh, it's pretty fascinating. But they they were definitely built by. Uh, yeah, I don't think it was built by terrestrials. Definitely, but I think they were built by extraterrestrials, or or the um, the technology was given by extraterrestrial beings for sure. Yeah, I think um, the same. You know, all over the world you have these pyramidal structures and stuff, and yeah. I think that knowledge yeah. was given. <clears throat> yeah. And I also think that, like, you know, a lot of the, the Hindu temples and stuff like that, some of those have literally been carved from the top down out yeah. of the mountain. Right. That is fascinating to me. Yeah, it, again, that's use of, use of a technology which even today's scientists can't figure out. You know, uh, some of the uh, intricate, you know, designs uh, that were made in the rock, they can't, they can't reproduce that now. So, yeah, again, you know, that's, uh, well, you know, a lot of the structures in India, they go, I mean, they go back to Atlantean times. Yes. As uh, if you study the Mahabharata and the Ramayana, Ramayana they, they talk about the battles, using vimanas and yes. light beams. and I mean, that that pretty much was talking about the atomic destruction of Atlantis. And in the Nine Freedoms, uh, Dr. King said that they invented two weapons in Atlantean times. One was called uh, Indra's Dart, which was a controllable atomic beam, and the other was, was called the Brahma weapon, which was an atomic bomb. And... So they, they destroyed the uh, civilization of Atlantis through a nuclear holocaust. They did with Lemuria and as they did with, uh, with the planet Maldi. Mm-hmm. So this is the fourth time that we've unleashed uh, the power of the, uh, the destructive power of the atom because the constructive part of, of, of atomic explosion is, is what the sun does to radiate energy out to the whole solar system right but we use the negative part of it and we've opened up the pandora's box again and we've got to be very careful and you know i definitely believe that you know when when dr king was contacted by the by the space beings in the 50s we were in the middle of the cold war and and we started exploding the hydrogen and atomic bombs again and and it was very interesting that there was so many flying saucer sightings around the planet because Yes, they were con- they were totally concerned, and I personally believe that and even scientists today they, they cannot understand with all the fallout. I think, I think uh, America exploded over a thousand nuclear warheads, as did Russia, and the fallout should have killed everybody on the planet, including the planet. I think mm-hmm. they knew that this was going to happen. So I, they again, they used technology to absorb a lot of that atomic fallout. Uh, one incident that occurred in the in the Russian Ural Mountains uh, in the in the 50s, which was hidden by Russia, uh, there was the cosmic beings told Dr. King that there was an, a tremendous atomic explosion that occurred at a nuclear facility in the Ural Mountains in Russia, and at that time Russia totally denied it, and the, the cosmic beings said if, if because of their if it wasn't for their intervention. And uh, absorbing the radi- radiation from the explosion, they said that over 18 million people would have died. Mm, wow. And it wasn't to, it wasn't until 1976 that a Russian scientist who defected from Russia uh, said yes, there was an explosion in the Ural Mountains. So again, again, that's just pretty much proof 
the you know you know the the, the, the Russians denied, and at that time, the cosmic beings told Dr. King what happened. And again, that's, that's to me is living proof that these beings existed and and, and saved uh, saved uh, over eighteen million people from from uh, because it scared the Russians. They didn't know what what to do. And you know there was um, in Chernobyl happened again. They hit it, but they, there was a uh, there was um, a UFO that was seen over Chernobyl that was radiating pink beams of energy into the into the plant, which neutralized a lot of the fallout. And I think uh, Fukushima, they also saw spacecraft over Fukushima. So again, you know, we're not left alone. And you know, I think Fukushima would have would have poisoned probably most of the Pacific Ocean if it wasn't for the intervention, again, of higher technology, spiritual beings that absorbed a lot of that radiation that came from Fukushima. Yeah. And uh, those those things are not talked about. But, uh, you know, these are unsung heroes. They don't go around saying we saved you, but they did, regardless, you know. Yeah. So I guess it's like if we were observing, you know, kittens and puppies and we felt for them and they were doing something wrong we would try to help them you know save them from crossing the road or pick them up you know without asking for any any you know accolades and i think they probably do the same with us they, they look at us as very involved beings but they recognized the potential that we have because we were at one time extremely advanced beings scientifically and spiritually you know, they say in the days of Maldek, uh, robots took care of all tasks on the planet. We could control the weather. We were in a utopia, and uh, we destroyed ourselves. So, so they remember the times where we, where we were in 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 you know in a in a more we're, we're very we involved ourselves. We don't even have a third eye; we just have the pineal gland. At one time, we. Our third eye was open. We actually had physically a third eye. We had three eyes, and, the evil, and over involution, we don't have that third eye anymore. But uh, so they they know of where we were, and they recognize that. So that's why, you know, it's a kind of love that it's a kind of concern and love that that's again it's alien because they 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 love us as a race and care about us when we don't even love ourselves as a race. <laughs> Right. So it's, again, it's very alien in that, that another alien race will, will love another ra- involved race, want them to rise, while the race itself don't give a damn about each other and want to kill themselves, you know? Right. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, you know, um, you was talking about like Lemuria and, and Atlantis and, and all these civilizations that, you know, that I do believe existed on this planet before. Um, and then you went in and was talking about the destruction of, of these planets. And and if you listen to the story too, it says in one, you know, devastating night, Mm -hmm. Atlantis sunk Mm -hmm. and was gone. Right. And, Mm -hmm. um, I was reading and I think it was about five years ago. Um, it may be in a little bit longer, but it was an article, uh, in India on a temple and I forgot the name of the temple, but it had all these locked and closed doors. And, mm-hmm. and like, uh, they said one of them was supposed to have like all these riches in there, this gold and these jewels and all that stuff. Well, they finally opened it up and guess what was in there? They said it was like trillions of dollars worth of, of gold and jewels and stuff. <clears throat> they ended up opening all these doors, but one, and that one had a, a warning to it. And it was pretty much that weapon you was talking about. Um, mm-hmm. it said, you know, that there was death and and everything behind that door do not open it you know there's warnings about this this ultimate weapon whatever this weapon was and i i believe that it it definitely could have been the atomic bomb or some you know form of it well the secrets behind it right. may not be the actual weapon but the uh but the um uh the secrets behind making it you know yes Dr. King mentioned, he said, some of the, 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 some of the weaponry that the higher beings have, they said that they have a laser beam that, that could cut the planet in half, like, a, like butter goes, like hot knife through butter. 
Wow. In some, that's some of the technology that's so powerful that what they would they they would dare not use any of that technology unless unless it was used to maybe defend uh, against an attack or or, or or used you know or authorized by the highest. So you know let's not let's not let, let's just remember that the, 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 that these beings are tremendously powerful uh, on a military aspect as well. But they don't use their military might in the way that we do for disruption, but more for protection. So the, these, these there are advanced instrumentations which could which could like blow up a planet, like Star Wars. I mean, those things are not not sight figments of imagination anymore. These are realities. So um, it's been said that after when when Lemuria. Lemuria sank. They said that the that the Earth herself was told to flip on her axis, and that's that she had to do that for her own safety, and that's when Lemuria sank, and, and Atlantis also sank. They, I think the Earth was told to flip on her axis. So twice the Earth has flipped on her axis. So that they talk about the Great Flood, and so you know, um, lands that were under water are now above water, and lands that were above water or underwater. So Lemuria and Atlantis are under the seas, deep, deep down somewhere, you know. So um, you know, the Great Flood happened twice, so let's just hope it doesn't happen again. Right. <clears throat> and that that is also something that, uh, you know, is a worldwide phenomenon. You know, um, the Bible talks about it, but then before the Bible... You know, you you had um, the Sumerian texts that also talked about the a great flood, right. and um, and then here in the Americas, a lot of the American natives uh, talk about yeah. a great flood. You know, um, so there was there was definitely, I think, more than one, or yeah. there was just a bunch of retellings of the original one. So if people don't know how to channel this energy. Um... Uh, I belong to a group of people. We get together in different countries. We send out energy. We're sending out energy right now for you, for the uh, uh, Ukraine crisis. Uh, we we actually had this campaign where we were asking people at nine o'clock every day to send out five minutes of of, of healing energy to the Ukraine. So that's going on till like the twenty seventh of, of May. Um, they said this this. Satellite number three is still in orbit till till Monday, and um, uh, so you know w- uh, we have every opportunity to you know we don't have to spend hours and hours you know because we everybody has jobs and families and whatever so they're not asking us to spend hours in prayer and sending out the light but just you know ten fifteen minutes a day if if we did it on mass we could change. Uh, there was one transmission. They, they said that they approached another civilization in this galaxy that was going through a similar testing period as Earth was going through, and they opened themselves up to the energies from the higher beings. And they said, in in fifty years, they completely transformed this planet in the, the planet in in this particular uh, part of the galaxy. So, um, so the beings are offering us this inspiration. Um, there's a there's a, there's a website called 12blessings.org that 12 be numerical. So if people don't know how to channel the energy, they can join us uh, every day. It's free. There's no charge. It doesn't matter, you know, again, what race or religion you're from. You're interested in sending out the energy and don't know how to do it. Sometimes on a collective, it's more easier than, than doing it on an individual basis. So that is mm-hmm. definitely the call of action today. Yeah, and there's a lot of studies that's been shown where – People, you know, get together and and do those type of things, and it actually does have a um, a physical change that that can be measured um, when it's done. So, you know, I well, it's just like electricity, David. You know, we can't see can't see electricity, but we we know what it does. Mm-hmm. Spiritual energy is the same. It's just on a higher octave. Uh, there was a friend of mine; his son fell off a roof. And, in a like a drug induced state and and hit his head and he was going to die and we, we got a prayer circle going and we sent energy and, and and the kid lived which again 
to me is proof that you know spiritual prayer energy, spiritual energy, whatever you call it, it it's it's a tangible energy. I mean, your listeners can stand in front of a mirror, okay, and 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 raise their hands and and visualize this white light leaving their hands and the heart center. And it will actually reflect from the mirror and it will come back to the aura and you can actually feel a tingling around your fingers and around your aura. And so, you know, it's, it's actually a living proof that this, this is a real energy. This is not something airy fairy. I mean, we're all, we're energy, we're spiritual beings in physical bodies. It's not the other way around, you know, like we meet somebody, our auras intermingle and we get a vibe about that person and sometimes we don't like the vibe of that person or Mm -hmm. sometimes we just like love the vibe of the other person. It's an energy exchange on a subtle level, but it's all about energy, you know? And so, so this, this, this spiritual LOV, the energy of love, which is is universal, I think is the most powerful energy in the cosmos. And, uh, and so it's a real energy. You know, it can it can actually be um, stored. I think in Atlantean times, they used to store energies in the winter, uh, pranic energies to be used in the in um, in the summer to be used in the winter. So uh, this is again technology that's just recently been introduced to planet Earth again. But uh, you know, uh, uh, again, it's the only solution that's going to fix is the spiritual energy solution, not, not the religious one not the dogma, but the spiritual energy is the only solution that's going to fix our planet right now. Uh, what, what was the so, name of the website again? Uh, where you... uh, the one where we, where we do the rituals, uh, that's called 12blessings.org. 12 the blessings. 12 being nu- numerical. Okay. And, uh, and we, we send out energy to uh, the peacemakers, to the wise ones, to the to those who love, to the planetary ones, we send out energy to the nature spirits, the thanksgivers. We send out energy to those who heal. We send out energy to the earth, to the sun, to the galaxy, to the lords of creation, to the whole of the whole universe. So it's a set of specially devised uh, prayers that we send out that were channeled through uh, my master. And so, if people don't know how to send out energy, they can just join mentally with us. And it's another way of being of service. There's, there's three ways of being of service today. It's physically, you know, you can go. Not, not many people can actually go and help the homeless. I mean, I, I do voluntary work. I help um, I help uh, drug addicts and alcoholics as part of my voluntary work. I also, you can donate to charities financially. And then, of course, you know, uh, the third one, which I think is the most important one, is to send out the power of the spiritual energy. And any man, woman, and child, animal, or any plant can do it. And, and that's the calling. We, we, we can't suddenly, you know, suddenly end up in a one torn country and do voluntary work. But we can send energy to the, to the, to the uh, people who are doing the voluntary work, sending power to them to help uplift and, and energize them. And so we do that on a mass scale with, with another operation that Dr. King devised where in, in the case of a war we send this tremendous amount of energy out to, to the peacemakers or in an earthquake uh, or in a flood or a famine we send out to the aid workers. So what it does, it actually strengthens and inspires the aid workers and gives them more protection to do their work. So it's a, it's, it's a win-win situation and somebody mentioned about, you know, again, you know, the law of karma. We do The more energy we send out, by the law of karma, we get back that same energy that we send out. So we send out evil thoughts, we get evil thoughts back. So again, it's a win-win situation. It's a, it's a very safe way of evolving is to co- constantly send this spiritual energy, which will in, internally change our vibrations inside and help raise, naturally raise this power of Kundalini, uh, this, you know, this phenomenon meditative power that we have within us in a natural way. And so it's a great way also of evolving. So it's a, it's a win-win situation. I th- well, I mean, for me, <clears throat> you know, um, I've taken part in some things like 
I listened to another show. Um, I'm sure everybody that listens to our show has probably heard of it, um, which is Coast to Coast AM. And uh, yeah. over the years, they've done a bunch of experiments where they've tried to, let's say, uh, a big storm is coming in somewhere, and right. and they try to lessen it. And and it seems like overnight it goes from a, say, a Category 4 hurricane down to a 2, just out of nowhere for no reason. And, um, and so I, I really do believe that, that with, you know, a bunch of people getting together and, um, however you say it, praying, sending out intentions, um, what, whatever it is, it's, it's the group getting together and then the intention that's put into it, that, uh, that energy that's put into it, that, that gets a result back, you know? Yeah. I mean, I remember, um, you know, so all these fires and earthquakes, tornadoes, you know, hurricanes, tsunamis, you know, we're responsible for all these. This is our own karma because we send, on a collective, we send out these uh, energies from our minds to the to the nature spirits that control these, these, these uh, this, the weather. And, you know, the American Indians and other indigenous tribes have proved, you know, that, like with their ritual rain dances, sending out energy to the nature spirit, they've created rain. And so um, there was, I remember an incident years ago, uh, there was a, a hurricane coming towards uh, the Texas Panhandle, and and there was one woman, Marion Williamson, she was running for Democratic presidential at that time, and she, she said, everybody needs to pray send energy to that hurricane and they and they laughed her off she had to, she had to uh, delete the twitter quote because the press and the media and the politici- politicians laughed her off. and she was doing it she was saying exactly what needed to be done mm-hmm. people are just so ignorant they just bypassed it as something airy fairy but if the media would have picked up and said yeah raise your hands and send send uh, power to the to the diva of that hurricane that, that's controlling this hurricane yeah, it, it, it would have it would have diminished absolutely. So, in in days of now that we did that, we, we could control the weather. So again, that's another aspect of controlling our pulse and sending out pulses because it is picked up by the nature spirits, and uh, and you know a lot of this uh, bad weather can be controlled by us. So absolutely right. Well, um, Wajid, it's about. Time for us to get off the air. If you want to go ahead and uh, give everybody your information, where they could find you, and what you're doing next, and, and you know, we definitely got to have you on yeah. for another conversation. Yeah, we, we're not done. Our, uh, our conversations seem to <laughs> seem to um, morph, and I like that. You know. Yeah, absolutely. I um, in a lot of interviews uh, lately, it, 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 it shows that people you know, are interested. Uh, a good thing also uh, with my book, uh, I was contacted by a, a filmmaker here in Asheville, North Carolina, and uh, she they actually want to make a documentary on the book. Oh, wow. so, that's awesome. Uh, so, and so we're trying, to, if, we, if the documentary comes out, we may try to get it on Netflix or Amazon or something. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. Okay. Um, Definitely do. There's a trailer. We made a trailer for the documentaries on the website. So if, if people want to learn more about Dr. King and the documentary in the book and some of my funny YouTubes, <laughs> uh, they can go They can go to my website, which is uh, wajidauthor.com, W-A-J-I-D-A-U-T-H-O-R.com. That's also the one that we've got under him too, isn't it? Yes. Yes. So... Awesome. If everybody forgets, you and can I, also go under. I posted the link to the documentary uh, preview what, uh, on Facebook. Trailer. And, yeah, the trailer on Facebook. And I think, I don't think I posted on the website yet. But I've watched it. it it's going to be good. Yeah, it, it, we're probably going to try to do it either the end of this year or the beginning of next year. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. See what happens. All right. 
So de- you're definitely going to have to come back and we talk again. Yeah, right. it's always great to talk to you guys. Uh, next time, maybe try to get more questions in from your audience. <laughs> yeah, we have we had a few that was in here, but um, but yeah, I mean, you know, um, you're a wealth of knowledge, and um, Jason and I we're just sitting here listening to you. Yeah, like, you know, great speaker. <laughs> yes, yeah, and uh, we definitely love the fact that you come on and uh, and talk to us and you know, enlighten us and, and everybody that gets to listen to this and all, all the people that are live in Podbean and on our website and on Spreaker and everything, um, you know, you're getting to, you're, you're definitely getting your message out. And, um, and we, you know, we want to say that, you know, we thank you for coming on and, and being part of that with us. All right, gentlemen, it was a real pleasure and, uh, look forward to, uh, meeting up with you guys again. Yes, sir. You, you have a good night. Yes. Thank okay, you. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye now. All right. Wow. It's great. That's all I got to say. Just wow. Uh, that was Wajid Hassan. Remember, his book is The Struggle for World Sanity, and it is a good book. I, I'm being honest. It is a very good book. Um, So definitely give it a, a listen um, or buy it and read it yourself, whichever way you. I think he is the one that narrates it in the audiobook. So it's, yeah. it's really good. All right, so uh, next week we'll probably be doing some short shows because David's going to be on the road. Very possible. Trying we'll to see. make some money. Hopefully. <laughs> Get some of that good energy going. That that I am definitely trying to do because I was really down um, on myself for a few days this week. I, I, I think um, the one thing I, I really enjoy about having Wajid on it. It seemed like it's fate, I guess, that he came on today, <clears throat> this time, and not, what was it, last month when he was originally going to be on, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, because it lined up, synchronicity is crazy sometimes, but, you know, I've been having a terrible, terrible week, one of the worst weeks I could remember in a long time, and, uh, you know, he comes on and, and gives you inspiration, um, and, let you understand that there's, you know, there's trials and that we're living them and, and, um, and we just have to overcome them. Oh yeah. So I'm, you know, I needed to hear that tonight. Everybody, if, Mm -hmm. if, if you can and would try to try to go to that website and learn how to do that, maybe we'll get some good results. Yeah. If we all did it at the same time, like he said, you know, um, I, I'm telling you, I've I've seen those things happen on coast to coast and stuff where mm-hmm. where there was noticeable things that actually happened, hmm. and I think it's just in direct correlation with everybody focusing their intent on that one thing at that time, you know. Yeah, and that's twelve blessings dot org. Also, you can uh, go to paranormal four one one dot org, sign up for free. Become a member. It's all free. You can get in the chat room with us, and we can just chat away. Yes. We love seeing everybody in our chat room, but, hey, we love seeing everybody in the Podbean and everything, too. Um, but, you know, our chat room is actually a lot better. Just, just It's working you know. now. Yeah, it's it's actually Good. a lot better. Uh, Jason went in and, and, and fixed it. I did, didn't I? Yeah, you did it's a good a, job. It's working good. Yeah, you did a good job. So the the it's working a lot better. Um, you get to log in. You you could even set some little avatars for yourself and all kinds of cool stuff. And when we post things up, we could post pictures while we're talking like Jason did earlier and stuff a lot easier than in a lot of these other, um, you know, chat programs. So, um, check it out, check it out, check it out. You know, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, I think we did a pretty good job on our website. Yes. (laughs) So nice. <clears throat> it is. We do have a uh, uh, a new thing going. We got four one one swag. Yeah, you need you some swag. You know, J- Jason's wearing one of our new swag shirts. Boy, oh, it yeah. looks it looks good. It does that's a good looking shirt, Jason? All the way from Germany. Woo! German engineering at its finest. Yes. <laughs> yeah. If you go to the website and go in four one one swag, you can see a few little items we have: shirts, mugs. 
buttons, teddy bears, teddy bears, elephants, and rabbits. <laughs> things Those that you nice. need, things you have yeah. to have. Uh, the, and the go coffee on. cups are cool. That's what yeah. I want to order for myself. I, I'm going to have me a coffee cup. All right. I need one. I'm going to get me some old slippers. <laughs> you know, slippers are cool. <laughs> but uh, going over to Facebook, too, and follow us, like us. Twitter. You can post. Twitter, Facebook, um, YouTube. Twitter, YouTube, yes, yes, YouTube. We're trying to grow our YouTube. Uh, we're at, what, 1,000, you said? We finally hit 1,000? 1. 1.6, I think's what it said. Nice. We're growing pretty big. So, uh. We hope you enjoyed tonight's show. We want to thank everybody. And remember, we were talking to Wajid Hassan tonight. Uh, his book is The Struggle for World Sanity. And uh, his website is linked on our site at paranormal411.org. Um, all you have to do is just go in and look up, look for him. And in the search in the top right-hand corner, you just type in Wajid Hassan and and he'll pop up and, and everything's there. So definitely check it out. And um, join us, join us. <laughs> and and I want to also say thanks for joining us. Oh, yeah. So you have a good night. Have a good weekend. Hey, uh, barbecue and have some fun tomorrow. Oh, at least, yeah. At least here it's going to be really nice. All right. You taking us out? Yes, sir. It's time to go. And uh, again, us up, Scotty. thanks for coming. Thanks for joining, and we will see you and talk to you later. Thanks for listening to the show. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter at Paranormal411. Join us on the website at Paranormal411.org. It's free to sign up and become a member. All of our upcoming shows are on the guest and events page. You can also listen to past shows on the website as well. And if you like the show and want to support us, you can do that by becoming a premium member for only $2 a month. Thanks for listening to Paranormal 411. Join us.